So I thought I'd just do a really quick little video on something I'm working on right now. I've had a few problems with this. Now I've got this system where at events I'm using these units which I've built. I've done videos on these before. Which are using two lower modules in here. And they communicate with things like these, right? Which are scoring units. And these are at the ringside. And also another unit which is a keyboard which is for entering the contestants into the event. I've been having problems with unit one. Which is this unit here and the accompanying paired keyboard which goes with it because they've done as a pair. Both units have been playing up. I actually rebuilt unit one and that's actually working okay now. Mostly seems to be a lot better. Replaced the ESP32, replaced the lower module and it's been behaving better. Previously it was behaving really badly. And then the keyboard part has been playing up as well. I thought okay well the only common thing between that is these gateways. So these are gateways which I built and it's basically an ESP32. I've got a um, Ethernet module in here as well just there and it's got Wi-Fi and Ethernet and it will use Ethernet as a primary connection source to the server if the Ethernet falls over or disconnects or has some kind of problem it will fall back onto Wi-Fi and use that instead alright so it's got these redundant systems built in as much as possible same as the SP32s and the actual units those will be using the LoRa system if the LoRa falls over it will fall back onto Wi-Fi that's the intro <laughs> I just discovered something interesting I'm testing these units I've been testing every single module so this is actually one of the lower modules like this, right? it looks exactly the same as this. This is a lower module I'm using, this type. So there's two versions, a 30 dB version and a 20 dB version. 20 dB is cheaper than 30 dB, well the DBM I should say. And the testing I've been doing is surprising because I've tested all of these units here and all the keyboard modules and I'm getting 14.5 dBm output on the 20 dB setting. Up to 15.3 is most I've got out of both these units and the keyboard units. So I've been noting down what I'm getting at that setting. So I set 20 dB and I'm getting these levels, which is interesting. So now I'm testing these gateways, because I had to check those as well. Now they've got a minimum setting of 21 dBm and maximum setting of 30 dBm. I normally run it with 21 dBm because a higher power module and running it more gently. That's the theory. What I've found though, I've made a mistake here, it's actually not tested yet, we'll test it in a second. At the 21 dBm setting, I'm getting plus 6 dBm. And at the 30 dBm setting, I'm getting 14 dBm, which is no different to the 20 dB modules. Interesting. So we're going to test this one right now and see what we get. So this is unit 1 and 2. Unit 1's this side, unit 2's that side, okay? Talks well enough, it's not perfect, you know, it's, oh, I could do it, so it actually talks over. There you go, talks over. So, this will be using unit 2. I've got my Roland Salt CMU200 up here set up for doing spectrum mode, and I can show you that in a second. I'm going to rejig the camera thing. I will demonstrate this. Oh, unit 2 I want, this one here. Unit 2. Let's get this thing fired up. Get this thing sending requests through. So that's sending requests through and I'm seeing it on the unit up there. And we're actually getting better readings on this one. This is interesting. Let me check the power settings on this. Raw unit 2. Oh, we've got set to 24 dBm, so we've already got this one turned up a little bit, so I'm actually going to go down to 21. I'm going to reset my spectrum analyzer and check it again. So this is set at minus 21 dBm. Right, I'm going to change camera views and we'll see, look at the spectrum analyzer. So I actually think I'm getting different results on this particular unit. So anyway, we'll carry on testing. Let's do a check. Here we go, I've got to do this a few times to make a trigger. So we can get a decent reading on it. I think that's good enough. So markers, peak, frequency is bang on, and that's 18.7 dBm. That's actually right. It's only 3 dBm down, so this one's much better. So that is actually working as it should. Let's change the actual power output. Let's go to the maximum. Let's do it again. That's good enough. Peak is still there, 28.3 dBm. So this one's actually good. This one's fine. So this one's working as it should be. So I'll put it back down to 21 dBm. Right, let's change a different one. I'll set it on unit one, which should be a different frequency. Should be down here. See something there? Let's have a look. So this is set at 21 dBm right now. And you can see it's right down here. That's really weak. This is why this one's been giving me trouble. Look at it. Oh, that is interesting. Portion of peaks going to be over here. Right, this is why this one's been giving me trouble. That's way off. So it's minus 14 on 21 dBm. 
So let's change the output power. Let's make it maximum power. So it should be 30 dBm. Oh, look at that. Markers. Peak. Yeah, okay. Frequency is about right, I think. So, yeah, I think it's about right for frequency. Maximum power is only minus 5 dBm. That's why it's going to be giving me trouble. Right, so now hook back up to unit number three, which is one I've already tested, which I found to have a low level. You'll see a peak over here somewhere. So this is set at 21 dBm. Let's find a peak. And we're getting plus 16. Interesting. This changed since the last time I checked it. Hmm. But did I leave the power turned up? Hold on. Oh no, I left the power turned up. So this is set at 30 dBm, and I'm getting plus 16. The actual output power is not what it says it's supposed to be on these other two units. So maybe these are also failed, or maybe they're fake. Maybe they don't actually have the amplifier in them. Maybe the amplifiers are giving a problem. I pulled the module out. This is unit one, which was the first one. Okay, so this one has definitely got bad RF. So let's stick under the microscope so we can see what's wrong with it. This is anything visual at least. Now, the you may notice there's a little chip off this inductor. I think I did that when I opened it up because I had to spudge her down the sides. I think I, I just nicked that and uh, damaged that, so ignore that part. So the RF path obviously comes out through here. Little capacitor in series there. You've got some inductance and filtering on the output of this device here. So device there is the SX1276 here. But this is obviously RF because you've got these inductors here passing through these inductors. I mean it could be DC filtering is possible too. So I'm trying to see the paths for this is interesting. Let's get this around here, get the shadows off it. Hopefully. So there's a the left pin from this goes this way, the right pin goes this way through zero ohm resistors, capacitors, series inductor, inductor to some other tuning circuitry and ground. So this may be an amplifier. That may be some kind of switch. It's possible. Try and get the numbers of that one. S2 S1 S421. Different different devices. Because you think that the RF from this device would be switched to bypass the amplifier if it's not using it. I mean, it does have this switched output powers, so maybe that's something to do with that. Because you've got a controller here, which is what does the brains of it all, basically, and there's the actual RF module there. S2, S1 over here as well. I'm not going to analyse it that deeply. So I thought it would be interesting if we look inside it, see so if there's anything obviously bad. Nothing has stood out to me yet. It could be one of these switching things. I mean, I'm not going to be looking any of these things up, I'm just going to look through it. I mean, obviously don't look at that. That was me when I opened it up, I think. Pretty sure it was me. Yeah, I'm not going to try and repair it unless it's simple for but reliability to me is very important, so I'd rather just get another module, to be honest. So I'm pretty sure that would be the one watt amplifier. YP2233W. I, think I might go and look that one up. Yep, I was indeed correct. That YP2233W is indeed a amplifier with up to 34 dB output, and or dBm output and 26 dBm of gain. Anyway, so the RF input here, let's get the lighting on the belt so we can probably see it. Can we see the input? Input is down the left hand side here. Third pin down is the RF input. Can you see it? I can't. I can't see the trace on there. So it must be going through the other side of the ball. Um, it's around here somewhere. So it must be in a layer. That's right where the chip is. Obviously this is heat sinking. So it must be an inner layer on this ball. Anyway, that's the amplifier. So I believe it comes over to here somewhere onto the SX1276. I mean, we could actually probe around and actually try and see if we can find what the input power is to this thing. We could actually activate it and try and see if that point there has got a higher power level, like the typical power level, which would be like 100 milliwatts or whatever it would be, from this chip here. But anyway, that's interesting. This chip alone is $10 US. Just that one chip. One of these boards is so expensive.